Hi guys and welcome to this, the final video in this particular round of lessons for data transformations. And yes, as you can see behind me, the reciprocal transformation is what we're going to deal with. Hi, I'm Darren, otherwise known as Maths Guru, and it is good to see you. Have you subscribed? No? Then do me a favour, that do hickey in the corner if you're on YouTube. Or in MathsGuru.com will allow you to subscribe along with the eight members of my family who are watching. Hey mum, dad, and anyone else out there who knows me, good to see you. Um, if you can tell your friends about me, that would be good as well, but that would be weird. Anyway, uh, what is the reciprocal transformation? Well, if you're already aware of the log transformation, the square transformation that we did before, then you're pretty much set for this one. But in the same way as I've done for previous videos, here we go, there is our circle of transformations, which we've now met twice or three times before in previous videos. Yep, we know that we can now, by using a series of wonderful transformations and our CAS calculator, transfer, uh, transform curve data into hopefully a lot more linear. I'm not saying it's perfectly linear, but a lot more linear. We've dealt with the x squareds and the y squareds. We've dealt with log x and log y. We're now going to deal with reciprocal transformations. Oh, let's actually put the highlighter back on there, Mass Guru, and say that our reciprocal transformations are one on x and one on y. Now, reciprocal means just that. We take a value, we do one divided by that value. Yes, okay, so we're going to have one on x and one on y. How do we put that into my calculator? Exactly that way. One divided by x or one divided by y, if you're interested in how to do this in a moment. What does this actually do to our data? Let's have a look. So as we've done previously, the reciprocal transform can do something like, well, let's choose one. Which one can we choose? One on y. Yeah, let's do that one there. So we've got uh, data that looks kiss, 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 and more kisses. All right, so what have we got here? Well, this is on my normal graph that's called y, and this one's called x. So what we're looking at doing is doing a one on y transformation, a one on y transformation. Now, how on earth does this work? Well, I always like to look at numbers first. And if I do the reciprocal of any number, what I'm really doing is I'm flipping a fraction upside down. Way too much and way more for outside of this video than, than that. But what I'm trying to say is, if I have the number 10, which is really 10 on one, then the reciprocal of that becomes one on 10. Whoa, and if I had 100, on one, the reciprocal of that would become one on 100. If I had two thirds, for example, that becomes three on two. All I've done is I flipped the fraction. Now remember that any whole number is a whole number that can be divided by one. But what we notice here, three was on the bottom, now three comes on the top. Now two thirds is a number less than one, but three on two is like one and a half. And what do we notice? Well, we've got a big value here, becomes a really small value there, so 10, becomes one on 10, a small value. So what actually happens, believe it or not, when we do this, and let's move up and show you how it works. If I have uh, crosses like this, then this value here, we're gonna do a one on Y transform. So reading off this Y value here, it's fairly small yet. And what did I say would happen? Small values flip and become big values. So funnily enough, this value may end up somewhere up here. Then we move along to our next value. There's that value there, it's getting slightly bigger. So when I flip it, it'll be smaller than the next one. So you get something like this, and then something like this, something like this, and something like this, and something like this. Now I know I've drawn this perfectly straight, and the chance of that happening in real life are slim to zero. But the general idea is that we turn that sort of curve, if that's the right way for you guys watching, that way there, is now turned into a much straighter line. Okay, so that is our reciprocal transformation. As I keep going on about, and if you've already watched this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Y equals mx plus c is my equation of a straight line. But here we use y is equal to a plus bx. What do we call our values of x and y? Well, when we did our linear regression, we knew that we had to change that to height or age or years or GDP or whatever it was that we were being asked to do an analysis of. And in the same way here, when we do a reciprocal transformation, and the example I used here was a one on x, we would have y is equal to a plus bx, but because we're changing the x values, that would become one on x. Now again, to make that even more interesting, the x value will generally have some real world um, thing to it, like time, so in which case you would write that as one on time, yes? 
Don't get tricked by any of this and look for what is happening. Yay to a real world example. Thank you very much, Cambridge. What did we give you? Uh, well, one on Y transform here is exactly what's happened because when we try and compare this with our data transformations or our circular transformations, then what we notice is, yes, our values turn from that curve into a straight line. Mais oui, très bien. But whereas our length values have stayed the same, all right, so we had a value here at 3.5, it stayed there at 3.5 on the horizontal. What we noticed was, whereas it had a Y value of 3.5 there, it's gone to a lot, lot smaller there. It's gone to a value much, much less than one. So from bigger than one to smaller than one. It's flipped it around, yes. Notice as well that my gradient here is now positive, and so all is good. But notice what that is written as. Now, again, slightly confusing, one slash width, is nothing more than one on width, yeah? The textbook is fairly limited on what it can actually do these things as, but that's all right, because we can make up for it. So, using the information, and again, the textbook had already done this for me, what we noticed was, whereas we have y equals a plus bx, what do we notice? Well, our x-axis is the total length, and so is length. We did a one on y transform, we changed the y value, and so that became one on width. Here is my gradient, and here, uh, sorry, there is my intercept, and the other one is my gradient. Now again, as I've done in a previous video, please be very, very careful. Our intercept is calculated from when our explanatory variable is zero. Lots and lots of times, and in all the graphs that I've seen so far, we will start like above at the value of 3.5. So when a graph, crosses or theoretically seems to cross here, that is not my intercept. The intercept would only work if that value there is zero. Huge trick in exam. So we're gonna do an example using the CAS and then undoubtedly a VCAR question. So we are gonna take this example again from the Cambridge Further Maths Unit 3 and 4 textbook. And again, it says the table shows the length in centimeters and width in centimeters of eight sticky size labels or sizes of sticky labels. It says to use a one on y transformation to linearize the data, write this equation, and then to predict something. And again, remember, oh, this whole linear regression stuff is about predicting. Whee! First things first, length is the EV. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit so that I can see my calculator. Again, I'm using the Casio class pad. I uh, used to be a huge TI Inspire fan. Uh, the class pad I really, really like. So uh, if you are a TI Inspire user, the, the, it's pretty similar. Um, but I'll probably do uh, extractional videos for you guys a little bit later on, but not now. So here we go, I have entered my data on, and what do you notice? Yes, I've made wonderful titles that make perfect sense to me when I'm actually gonna do my regression analysis. What did I do then? Yes, I went into this button here, I brought up my graph and I said, well, you can do me a favor, can you just show me what my actual standard data looks like? And yes, we can see that it does that. Well, my question then says, well, can now you do a one on, oh, what was it? One on Y transformation. So, because we had length as the EV, I'm just checking myself, sorry guys, if that's making you sick. Because I had length here and I had width here, notice what I've now titled my new thing, rec width. Why rec? Just stands for reciprocal really. I could have made that a lot easier for myself and made that rec w for example, but you do what you need to do to make this easier for yourselves. Right, what am I gonna do now? So having done that, how did I get the calculation to work out for me? I put my cursor in here and then I typed one divided by width there. Literally tell the calculator what it is and make sure that this matches with this, all right? Or you're not going to have your formula work. It will complain at you. Having done that, what do I do next? Moving my screen up. Well, I linearized my data. I wanted to check that it worked, and actually that seems to be a lot more linear than it was. And having done that, I've gone calc, regression, and linear regression, and out once again has come my values, where A is equal to 0 0.0147, and B has worked out to be 0 0.086. So there are my values of A and B. 
putting it in to my calculator. Remember, we did a one on Y transform. So we need to make sure that what was ever on my Y axis, which is width, becomes one on width. Here is my value of A. Here is my value of A. Here is my value of B. Here is my value of B. And height stays height. It's not one on height. We didn't change the X value in any way, shape or form. So the X axis stays the same. And of course, as I've done in previous videos, uh, let's make this a bit smaller. It then goes on to say, well, okay, can we now find the width for a given length? Well, it does say that we have a length of five centimeters. Okay, and so we're gonna change height to five. I've put it into my calculator to try and help me. Now, what you've noticed if you are here is that in many cases, my calculator can do all the hard work for me. I don't know that I want to do the algebra of one on width, all right? It's a little bit confusing. You might get this the wrong way around. So my advice to you here is to actually use the solve function and put your calculator in. So what you'll notice is one on width became one on W. The rest of my formula was just typed as, as it was. And I said, can you solve for W? And out it came as 2.25. And there we go, 2.25. How is this used in VCAR papers? Well, yes, very much the same as we've done before. And so let's just check. It's given me some data. It's given me a graph. Wee. It's told me that the data is nonlinear and it wants it linearized using a reciprocal transformation for Y. Now, if you're out there and English isn't your first language, sadly, further maths is going to trick you a little bit here and you have to learn these specific phrases. So a reciprocal to the variable Y is asking you to do one on Y. Okay, there we go. There is my data X, Y, and you'll notice I've set up rec Y as well because it's asking me to do a reciprocal transform of Y. How do I do that? Put that in there. Now, please, please, please do not type rec Y, REC in brackets Y, any of that. Reciprocal just means one divided by Y. So here, my calculator will do one divided by Y because that's what I called, and there we go. Now, don't worry about that first value there. This is 9.E, E minus three. Again, we looked at this a little bit in a previous video. Ignore that for this moment in time. That's your calculator trying to be clever. So long as it plots the right values, that's all that matters. Right, okay, don't need to draw these graphs in any way, shape, or form. So calc regression, linear regression. What do we have? We were trying to do a one on Y. So X stays as that, but Y becomes rec Y. Hit enter, and there we go. What do we get? That minus 3.95 E minus three. We'll come back to that in just a moment and the value of B. So getting rid of that for a moment, we've got my value of A was equal to minus 3.95 E minus three. If you remember, that minus three tells you to do nothing more than move my decimal point three places that way. So one, two, three, 0.00395. Don't forget the minus sign as well. That is my value of A, and what was my value of B? was 0 0.0118. Rightio, so let's just check where you wanted a one on Y. So can I already get rid of some values? Yes, that value there and that value there goes. Well, that's the suggested answer, both go. They all seem to exist. Right, we're looking for an A value of minus 0 0.00395. A is the only answer. You're probably wondering where B and C come from. How can they be so, so wrong? Well, interestingly, remember it told you to do a one on Y transform. I will give you any money you like. I won't because I'm poor. That uh, one of those answers is for a one on X. And I would imagine another one that they've got the X and the Y values the wrong way around. All of these mistakes can and do take place in math. So just please be very, very careful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video on the reciprocal transformation. And believe it or not, it's the end of these videos for chapter six. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you are well and this has all made sense. If it is going well, then leave me a comment. If there's anything else you want me to do, leave me a comment, let your friends know. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe or head over to mathsguru.com and sign up for free where you can get notes and all sorts of stuff for these videos. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.